Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Velo Harmony. Eldred here. Today I want to focus on getting a video that's been on my list for a while. How do you prevent flats when you're riding on the road? Well, guess what? It starts at home. So let's get right into it. I'm going to take this bike, for example here, and put it on the stand. Let's see. I'm kind of spoiled because I've had stands for years. I just will not work on a bike without a stand. It's just more convenient. I'm standing. I don't have to bend over, get an ache in my back from bending over too long. It's just more comfortable. But what I want to talk about today is you want to prevent flats on the road. It starts here. You need to check your bike frequently. You need to check your tires frequently. You need to periodically, whether it's two, three times a week, I check it every week. Because think about it. You're riding 20 miles from home, 10 miles from home, 50 miles from home. The average person walks at what, two to three miles an hour maybe? If you're 10 miles from home, do the math. It's going to take you a while to walk home if you don't call for somebody to come pick you up or whatever. So you don't want to get out there and have real bad tires to where you can't even get a tube back in it because it's got such bad cuts in it to where you weren't keeping up with it. And then you get out there and you get surprised. So that doesn't happen to me because I do a lot of preventative stuff. So let's get right into it. After every ride, every other day, whatever, periodically come to your tire and just check it. You know, whether you have a stand or not, you can put the bike on the ground and just roll the tire and look. Believe it or not, there are times when you get a cut on the tire. Your tire didn't go flat during the ride, but whatever cut the tire is embedded in there. It's working its way in. And if you don't catch it, you'll have a flat on the next ride or the next ride. You just never know when. So if you don't keep up with your tires, some of the flats can come about from things that are already embedded in your tire that's working your way through the outer casing of the tire to get to the tube. Okay, so it's important to periodically look at your tire. If you see cuts, make sure the cuts are not allowing the tube to poke out and make sure that you squeeze the tire to make sure or try to open the cut. You can kind of lower the pressure if you want to. Whatever makes it easy for you to make sure nothing's in the cut. I have found pieces of paper clips in my tires didn't cause a flat but it was there and i was able to pull it out with a plier sometimes by hand just by this exercise we got a legend on here paul that i ride with a few weeks ago he found stuff in his tire and he sent me a text thanking me for mentioning that to him because he found stuff at home and ended up just putting a new tire on because the cuts were so much and so bad that he realized, you know what, it's time for a new tire. And that's another thing that checks do. Don't wait till your tires are completely bald. I mean, they're going to go, but what's the point? It's, um, it's all you've got in contact with the road. So you need to go ahead and replace them before the ball. Same way you do your car, I hope. I mean, that's how I do on my car. I don't wait till my tires are bald. I definitely don't wait till I see the tread wear. Same thing with the bicycle tire. Some of the tires, I will talk about the brands in a little bit that I use. With some of the tires, like the Continental 4000S, they have little dimples on the tires. They're like wear indicators, the little holes that they punch in periodically that will help you know when the tire's kind of low. But you can tell, you can look at them. And if you're getting a lot of cuts on the tire and the tire's thread has worn, I mean, sometimes some people ride slick tires, so you can't really tell. But you want to look at how big those cuts are. That's another reason I always carry a boot. I don't buy boots. Some of them come with the patch kits that they're in, but I make my own boots from old tires that I take off the bike. And I've talked about that in my other videos about what I carry in my saddlebag. So you can make your own boots. It's always good to have a boot in your spare kit. Whether it comes with the patch kit or you make it yourself, you need to have it because you can go out there and get a cut to where it won't hold a tube because the tube will come through and put, protrude. The goal is to be able to get home from these rides. So make sure you check your tires, especially the rear, because that's what the weight is on. Another thing to avoid flat when you're riding, you go over obstacles or debris, put the weight on the pedals. You don't have to stand, but put the weight on the pedals. Transfer your weight. That's another thing. Again, if you have a good fit, it's easy to do. It becomes second nature, you know? So anyway, you check your tires. Make sure there are no cuts. If there are cuts, it's a judgment call. Is the casing... 
still in good condition or the cut small enough to where the tube won't protrude. If it doesn't go all the way through, don't worry about the cuts. No big deal. Just make sure nothing, whatever cut it is not still in there because it will work its way in. So that's where you start. You check that several times, especially be, be, be before your group rides. You check that. Another way to avoid surprises, especially on group rides, is to make sure you have a spare set of wheels. I'm just going to grab this over here. Okay, it's always good to have at least an extra set of wheels. So what you do is you put your best tires on the, the set for your group rides and your grand fondos. And then you have your training tires for your everyday wheels per se. That's really a good way to make sure you don't, you have your best tires when the ride means more. Okay, so let me get away from the bike and come to the tires. So now, making sure that there are, there are no things in, encased in your tire Making sure that you're not riding on very worn tires is the first defense against having flats on the road because these cause flats. If your tire is very worn, it won't take much to give you a flat. And if your tire already has something that has previously embedded itself that you didn't catch, you're going to have, a, you increase your chances of having flats on the road. Now, the second way to make sure you prevent having flats is don't wait till you have a flat before you run to the bike shop to buy tires. Buying bike tires from the bike shop, you'll pay at least 50% more. Shop for your tires throughout the year. Go to Western Bike Works. I will put some links on my site to where you can find links, but a lot of the vendors online will give discounts throughout the year, especially in the winter. That's when you want to get your tires. I have a bunch of tires. I, I, I probably have like at least eight sets of tires sitting in the drawer that I just got samples here to do this video. You, you're going to use them anyway. I mean, I, I plan to ride my bike until I, I, I give my last breath. So that's why I buy tires. You know, riding bikes, I love it. That's what I do. So there's no question that I'm going to be using them as long as I'm around. So what I do is I get tires that are on sale. This tire I'm holding is a Vittoria Rubino Pro. Normally retails probably, I'm guessing, um, 40, 50 bucks maybe. I got these for $19 a couple of seasons ago. That's the dispute. You, you can pay like more than half when you get these things on sale. This is another, this is a Vittoria Open Corsa that I have. This is a kick, uh, Continental Gator Skin tire that I have. And this is a Continental Grand Prix 4000S. And where I'm going with this is, you wanna use heavy compound tires for your everyday training. Do not buy a so-called racing tire, no matter whether it's on sale or very cheap, to train in every day. There's a reason they're calling it racing tire. The compound is lighter, it rolls better and so forth, but it's for your special events. If you use it every day, it will wear quicker. It's not designed for all, especially if you're somebody that commute. If you're a commuter, you want heavy compound tires. You want a, 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 a cater skin tire or specialized make something called Armadillo. There are many brands out there. I'm just giving a sample of what I have here. Now, what this translates to is get your low TPI, thread, thread per square inch tires for your everyday riding, training, Okay, and sometimes they'll call it the tire training and racing. Then that's okay. You can use that all year for everything you do. That's what I qualify this Gator Skin for. I use it for everything. I'll go to a Grand Fondo. And I don't, it doesn't matter to me. They're very good tires. I like these because I use them on my trainer and they hold up. They don't get worn because the compound is very hard. It's not the fastest rolling tire, but it's not a dog either. It's just there. It, it, it holds its own. Okay, but it sure, it sure holds up against flats. The Continental 4000S is a great tire for what I call racing and training, the do-it-all tire. This is a very fast tire, very heavily recommended. A lot of people use it. I don't train in this. I treat it more like a racing tire than a training tire. Okay, so it's on this wheel. I use these when, these wheels I use them when I want to go fast and I'm trying to maybe improve a time or something or doing a grand fondo or whatever. That's when I use that. I use these wheels for my everyday training. This is a Continental Zonda, I mean, a Campagnolo Zonda wheels, sorry. But the tire that's on here is the Rubino 
Pro. This is a training tire. It might be like a 120 TPI. This is a tire that's great for all around training. You can even take it to your fast group rides or whatever. This is a tire I use most of the time on the road. The Rubino Pro right now by Vittoria. The Vittoria Open Corsa, I consider is a racing tire. I use this for grand fondos and special things that I'm doing. And they're mounted on another set of wheels that I have in the garage hanging that I use for special events. That's when I use those. So you need to make sure that you have a backup set of tires at home. What that does for you is when you're checking your tires and you find those cuts, it's a lot easier to just grab a tire out of your drawer and replace that instead of worrying about what the price is at the local bike shop that day. So get your tires ahead of time and change them before they're worn. I don't go more than a season on a, on a tire. I might, if I ride it a lot, six months, as soon as it starts getting really smooth or it has a lot of cuts and the cuts are pretty significant and they're big, I put a new tire on there. It, I mean, the joy of putting you know, new tires, like you're putting on new shoes. They just ride so much better. So that's another way I prevent my flats by making sure my tires are always in good condition. So checking them regularly, making sure you get things that may be stuck in there, especially after you do a wet ride or whatever, make sure nothing's stuck in there and making sure that you replace your tires before they're worn. That's the second thing. The third way to prevent flat is when you are riding, whenever possible, Ride where the right tire of the cars ride. That's the cleanest spot on the road. That's the smoothest part. If you're forced to ride in debris, unload your bike. Don't plant your butt on the saddle if you go through a lot of dips or debris. Because that compression going through a dip at speed with your weight on the back will give you what we call the snake eyes, pinch flats. That's how you get them. So make sure that you incorporate these things. And it's just preventative. And I tell you, I usually go a year to 18 months before I get a flat. It's not that frequent. That's one of the reasons why I stopped carrying canisters because I kept having to buy them and replace them. I just carry a small pump, the Topeak pump, and it works for me. I don't need the expense. And I, the canisters were heavier than the pump is and so forth. Then I had to stick it in my bag because I hated just putting them in my jersey because then they, they're kind of bulky and they move around. While I'm talking about preventing flats, the, the kind of tires that I ride, I ride the size 25 tires on my road bike. I put 25s on the rear. I put 23s on the front by choice. The reason I use 23s on the front is because the rims that I use are pretty small and I try to get a tire that fit the profile of the rim is more error. It just works better for the rim. If you're riding carbon rims like zips and so forth that are designed for larger tires, feel free to stick a 25 on there because the closer the rim, the rim and the tire are to each other, the more error they are. They just work better. And listen to the manufacturer recommendation for your, for your wheel. But I've always used the 23 on the front. They just seem livelier. I run 90 PSI in the front and 95 on the back. It gives me the best suppleness of my tires. So I, I, it goes over bumps so smoothly. It's just, it's just a joy to ride. So if you like larger tires, you could, if your friend can take it, you can stick a 28 on the back and even put a 25 on the front. I mean, it's up to you. I don't ride the 18s and I don't even know if they make them anymore. Like people that used to use for time trials, real narrow tires. I want some rubber on the road. I'm a big guy. I need to have a tire on the road and the 25 is close. Now there are manufacturers that will make tires. They'll call them 24 or 26. And when you actually air them up and you measure them, they're all close enough. So don't split hairs. Don't worry about it. If you like the 23s and you're a lighter person and it's working for you, that's great. But try the 25 because they roll better than even the narrower tires because they, they don't deflect, deform as much on the road. Uh, and you can run lower pressures in them, which is more comfortable. They're not any slower. And in fact, scientifically, they've been proven to be faster. So I just wanted to mention that I prefer to run the 25s on the rear and then I run the 23 on the front because of those rims. Uh, if I were to get a rim that required a 25, I would not hesitate to stick it on the front. But most of the rims that I'm using now are simple aluminum rims and they're like 22 when you measure them with a caliper. And so the 23 is the closest profile tire, you know, that fits it 
from an aero standpoint, it just worked better with these rims because it's been proven to get your tires to be close to the width of the rims, especially in the front. That's where it really matters. So I just wanted to mention that. But uh, that's what I wanted to cover today. It's very simple, but it's something that you need to do frequently. You know, you need to do it, especially before your group rides. Now, I do it all the time because I don't neglect my training wheels because I've got a, a finite time to train. I don't have time to mess with flats that frequently. So I make sure my training tires are in great condition. Same thing for you guys that commute. You're on your way to work. You don't got time for flat. Get the best tires, the strongest tires. Forget about weight. Get heavy compound tires, low TPI. Get training tires that will hold up with all the crap that we got in these cities. All the glass bottles that people throw on our stuff. You go through glass bottles, you got to unweight your tires and try to avoid them. But the roads, when they have a lot of potholes and other stuff like that, you need heavy compound tires, okay? The racing tires are, are really good when you're doing grand fondos where the corners are marshaled and so forth, and you get to pick your lines better. That's really why what, what they're best for. And Or if you're competing and you're in a race, the course is usually closed for you, and so you have more of the luxury of choosing a better line. Even people that do fast group rides, for us, we go out of the city, we go on beautiful roads, so we in better terrain. So that's when I use the 250 and up, TPI tire like Victoria car size so for the 320 TPI tires don't use your fancy light tires for everyday training unless you've gotten a pair that's older and now you're kind of wearing it out through training that's fine but as a rule you want to have your spares because when you have a flat it's good to have a spare if the tire is badly damaged so that you don't hesitate when you get home you just swap it out easier on your pocketbook and your peace of mind because you can get them before you need them than when you're in a bind. So with that being said, get out there, get your miles in, and don't let anything stop.